Hello everyone. My name is Casper and I'm going to tell you about hefty algebras, a technique for modular elaboration of higher order algebraic effects. Algebraic effects is an increasingly popular approach to modular programming with effects, both in theory and practice. On the left of the slide is a graph that summarizes how the number of publications related to algebraic effects and handlers published at conferences such as Popple is rapidly increasing. And on the right is a long list of languages and libraries that provide practical support for computational effects and for algebraic effects and handlers specifically. So what is it that makes algebraic effects and handlers so attractive? One of the key attraction points is its modularity properties, such as the three summarized here. I'll give illustrations of these properties shortly. The first property is that programs can freely and easily use and combine different effects. The second property is that effect handlers let us implement each effect independently from other effects and seamlessly combine the implementations of different effects. The third property, which follows from the second, is that by exchanging an effect handler for a different one, we can change the behavior of programs without modifying the program itself. The problem is that this modularity breaks down for higher order operations, that is, operations that have computations as parameters. An example of a higher order operation is the catch operation whose type is shown on the slide. The operation is parameterized by two computations, where the first computation corresponds to the try block of an exception handler and the second corresponds to the exception handler. The question is, how can we define this operation and other common higher order operations found in, for example, Haskell's popular monad transformer library, but also the literature, in a way that affords the same modularity properties as non higher order effects? In our paper and in this talk, we provide a general and simple solution to this problem. Before I describe this solution, let us consider the modularity properties and the problem with higher order operations in a little more detail. The first modularity property is that programs can freely and easily use and combine different effects by modeling an effect as an interface at the type level. For example, here is a simple interface for a state effect. The interface declares that the effect has two operations, a put effect for putting an integer into a stateful reference cell, and a get effect which retrieves the state. Below the declared interface is a simple program that uses it. The type before the exclamation point indicates that the program has a unit return type. After the exclamation point is the row of effect interfaces that the program may use. In this case, only the state effect. The program uses the get and put operations from the state effect interface to increment the state by one. We can freely call this program in any context that has at least the state effect. For example, say we declare another interface for an output effect with a single operation for outputting a string. Using this interface, we can write a new program whose type indicates that it has both the state effect and the output effect. And we can seamlessly call our previous increment program from our new program. This illustrates how programs can freely and easily use and combine different effects by modeling effects as interfaces at the type level. The second attractive modularity property of algebraic effects and handlers is that effect handlers let us implement each effect independently from other effects in a way that we can easily combine these implementations. For example, here is a program that uses an input effect and an output effect. The program first outputs a string asking for a name, then calls the operation representing receiving an input, and finally prints hello name. We can run the program, provided we first implement and invoke handlers for the effects that the program uses. For the purpose of this talk, it's not so important how effect handlers are defined. The types of effect handlers contains the information we need 
to explain how they work. The handler for the output effect has a special handler arrow type. On the left hand side of the arrow is the type of the computation being handled. In this case a computation that has the output effect and some other row of effects delta. On the right hand side is the type of the computation after the handler has run. Note that it no longer contains the output effect, only the effects in delta. You can also define a handler for the input effect by supplying a stream of strings representing input. Handlers are invoked using a special with handle construct. By nested invocation of our handlers using the with handle construct for the output and input effects, all the effects in our hello name program are handled, so we get a pure value as a result. In this case, the pure value that we get as a result is a function that accepts a stream of inputs and uses the first element of this stream to produce the desired output string. This illustrates how effect handlers provide modular implementations of effect interfaces that can be easily combined. The third and final modularity property of algebraic effects and handlers is that we can modify the behavior of a program without modifying the program text. This is possible because programs are written against effect interfaces whose implementations are given by effect handlers and we can change the effect handler we use to handle programs without changing the program being handled. For example, here is the same code as on the previous slide. Now say that the code on the left of the slide lives in a third-party library, whereas the code on the right lives in an application that we are developing. Our goal now is to modify the behavior of the output effect that occurs in the hello name program in our library without changing the hello name program itself. For example, say we wanted to use a censoring function to modify the output produced by hello name. We can achieve this by defining a different effect handler, hout prime, for the output effect. By exchanging the original handler for the output effect with our new censoring handler, we can refine the behavior of our library program. This illustrates how algebraic effects and handlers let us modify the behavior of a program without modifying the program text. As explained earlier, the problem is that higher order operations break this modularity. Concretely, algebraic effect handlers are not well defined for higher order operations, such as the catch example discussed earlier. A different example of a higher order operation which algebraic effect handlers cannot handle in a well defined way is the sensor operation. This operation takes a function of type string to string as its first parameter and a computation as its second parameter. The behavior of the sensor operation is that the censoring function of type string to string is applied to the output produced by the parameter computation. It is not well defined how to handle higher order operations such as this. The sensor operation is by no means a standalone example. As discussed earlier, the catch operation is another example. The well-known reader monad also makes use of a higher order operation, local, for locally passing down a different read-only resource from its surrounding context. Operations for lambda abstractions with effectful bodies are also higher order operations. The types of the lambda operations shown here are called by push value inspired. I won't explain the types here but they are explained in our paper. The point I want to make here is that it is not well defined how to handle either of these higher order operations using algebraic effects and handlers. There is a well-known and widely used workaround to the problem with handling higher order effects. The workaround is to encode higher order operations such as sensor in terms of more primitive effects and handlers. For example, the function sensor prime has a similar type signature and behavior as the sensor operation that we discussed earlier. The implementation of the function uses an inline invocation of the effect handler for output from earlier 
to get access to and to apply our censoring function to the batch output of the parameter computation M. While this elaboration is simple, it precludes one of the three nice modularity properties from earlier. Specifically, we cannot easily change the behavior of programs that use this sensor prime elaboration. The idea behind our solution to this problem is simple. We propose to define elaboration functions such as sensor prime in a way that makes them modular. We achieve this by introducing a layer of interaction. The idea is to write programs against higher order effect interfaces whose operations are either higher order operations or primitive effects. For a given row of higher order effect interfaces ranged over by H here, we can define separate elaboration algebras for each entry in the row, thereby implementing each higher order effect interface and elaborating higher order operations into primitive effects and handlers. Our solution provides similar modularity properties as algebraic effects and handlers, but for higher order effects as well. The solution uses only simple, off-the-shelf ideas known from data types a la carte. But in spite of its simplicity, it lets us define all of the examples that we summarized earlier. In contrast, previous solutions to the higher order effects problem either support only a subset of the higher order effects we discussed, or they require significantly more involved machinery at the meta-theoretical level and on behalf of programmers working with handlers in previous systems. Finally, our solution admits verification of semantic equivalences about higher order operations. In the rest of this talk, I'll give a flavor of how our solution works. First off, let's discuss how we declare and program against higher order effect interfaces. Higher order effect interfaces can be declared similarly to how algebraic effect interfaces are declared. However, since higher order effect interfaces can only be elaborated but not handled by algebraic effect handlers, we distinguish higher order effects by declaring them using the keyword heft. We also use a type with two exclamation points to indicate that a given computation makes use of higher order effects. The interface row that occurs to the right of a double exclamation point may comprise both higher order and algebraic effect interfaces. Other than these differences, we can program against higher order effect interfaces just like algebraic effect interfaces. Note that the keyword heft is an acronym for higher order effect. Let us now consider how to define elaboration algebras or hefty algebras. Here's the same code as on the previous slide. We can run the sensor hello program by first invoking elaboration algebras for each effect in the type of sensor hello. Doing so gives us a program that has only algebraic effects, which can then be handled. Unlike handlers, which are applied in sequence, elaboration algebras are composed and applied in one go. Here we are composing two elaboration algebras, E out and E sensor. The algebra for E out is an identity algebra in the sense that it maps the out operation onto itself. The algebra for E sensor is very similar to the non modular sensor prime workaround function that we considered earlier, and it serves exactly the same purpose. It elaborates the higher order sensor effect into more primitive effects and handlers. Unlike the non modular sensor prime workaround function we considered earlier, our new elaboration algebra based definition lets us change the behavior of a program without changing the program text or without changing library code. For example, here's the same code as on the previous slide. 
Let's say we wanted to change the behavior of the sensor operation so that instead of applying the sensor function f to the batch output of a computation, we apply the sensor function to each string that an out operation is applied to. The E sensor prime elaboration highlighted here does just this. Depending on what f is, the result computed by run sensor hello will now differ from before. We have thus changed the behavior of our sensor hello program without modifying any of the program and library code on the left. Our paper describes an actor embedding of higher order effect trees, which provide a model for the examples I have used in this talk. As mentioned earlier in the talk, our framework is based on data types of the car techniques and elaborates higher order effect trees into the free monad. Not described in the paper, but included in the artifact that accompanies the paper, is a simple and direct Haskell embedding of higher order effect trees. Finally, the paper also contains examples of how to prove semantic equivalences and a range of example definitions of higher order effects from the literature, including the ones I've mentioned in this talk already. In summary, our paper describes a technique for modular elaboration of higher order effects. This technique provides a simple but general solution to the modularity problem with modeling higher order effects using algebraic effects and handlers.